the barn quilts trail really captured my imagination. Um, my friend Jean lives here where we're standing and this is her barn quilt. And about just about a little over a year ago, I was right I like to ride my bike and I ride all over the valley. And I rode past Jean's house and I didn't know anything about the barn quilts or what it was or anything and I saw this on her barn and I was, you know, I was so taken by it. I so I called her immediately and I told her how much I liked it. And she said, well, do you want to help paint them? And so I went to the studio and that was the start. I was hooked. My name is Betty Severin and I am from Ellensburg, Washington. Born, raised, moved away, came back. As an early barn quilt owner, um, I was also unemployed and looking for something, actually I should say semi-retired, uh, looking for something to volunteer for and be a part of, and um, I'm creative, and I love anything create, uh, involving paint or anything like that, and it was just perfect. And I have been painting with them for over a year. Mm -hmm. I think the other painters also enjoy it because it's, it's kind of a social thing. It's, there's about four of us that are always there. I mean, other painters come in and, and there are other volunteers that, that do come in, but we just show up like it's a job, you know, like twice a week, and, and it, if it takes five hours a day, that's fine, but, um, but we've gotten really close. So we've been hanging barn quilts on really old barns like this one that's over 100 years old. But we've also hung them on new barns and uh, old barns that have been turned into party rooms and old barns that have been turned into homes. And even buildings that aren't barns at all like the Kittitas County Historical Museum. And, and we've actually intentionally um, put them up on any museum that had any kind of an agricultural basis to it or reference to it because we also want the visitors that come to drive the barn quilt trail to stop at those museums and historical sites in our county. There's, there's a lot of people that work on those projects that are volunteers that really need the support of visitors coming through and um, putting donations in the donation box. So it's our hope that this not only uh, um, is a, a great educational tour of farmland, but also the greater history of the county. Um, the other goal we have is that it, that it would have a positive impact on our economy here. Okay, this started in Southern Ohio with a woman called Donna Sue Groves and her mother. Her mother was a quilter, very well known in the area, and they owned a little farm with a tobacco barn on it, in just right on the edge of the Appalachian Mountains, a very rural area. And her mother wanted a painted quilt block put on the barn. So Donna Sue Groves, who was pretty artistic, said she'd make it for her. And so she painted it, hung it on the barn, and then the neighbors wanted one. So Donna Sue helped them paint one for their barn. And then another neighbor wanted one. And so by the end of that first year, she had 20 neighbors on this little windy rural road in Southern Ohio with quilt blocks. And at the time, they didn't, hadn't coined the term barn quilt, but that other people started calling them barn quilts. And that's where that term came from. The, uh, tourists were calling the Chamber of Commerce asking what that was all about, what are all these quilt blocks on barns, and so the Chamber contacted her, found out how her story, and a, a local paper ran a newspaper article about it, and then other papers in the region picked up that story, and the tourists started to come. And then other counties started calling her, asking how they could get barn quilts on their barns because they want a tourist. And, and being a very generous person, she told them exactly how she did it, how they can do it, and eventually, within a couple years, there were like five counties all around her that had barn quilt trails. 
Well, this got picked up as a whole region of barn quilts, and then other newspapers picked up that, and other counties started hearing about it at chamber conferences and things like that. And it snowballed into this, what they call the American Barn Quilt Trail movement. From that very first year of 20 barn quilts, it has now spread to over 5,000 barn quilts across the country. So in 2012, um, my husband and I thought this would be something that would really work well in Kittitas County. I had seen an image of a barn quilt on a barn in Iowa on the internet and you know researched it and found out it's not just about painted quilt blocks on barns, but it's about the heritage of the farming community. It's about the story of how that family homesteaded that area, um, how the barn is built, all the things the barn has witnessed. I mean, on the East Coast, these barns have witnessed some of them the Civil War. That's how old they are. We came on board. We were the 34th state to get a barn quilt trail. And at that time, there were 4,000 barn quilts up across the country. And this is considered the largest grassroots art project in our nation's history. Um, if they meet the criteria of it being on a public road and um, has that agricultural history or, or um, relationship, then they can choose their own barn quilt, and a lot of those are based on old family quilts. My name is Mary Pittis, and my husband Doug and I own the Iron Horse Inn Bed and Breakfast here in South Cleelum. And we're also part of the South Cleelum Rail Yard National Historic District, which was all of the Milwaukee Railroad properties here in South Cleelum. It makes me proud that we have this historic property that's being recognized and represented on the, on the Barn Quilt Trail. Uh, it means a lot that the, the quilt block itself is called Railroad Crossing because this is so appropriate for this National Historic District uh, connected with the South Clay Elm Rail Yard um, that was the Milwaukee Railroad. Um, railroad Crossing, as you can see, the, the X is the, the center emphasis there, just, just like the railroad crossing signs uh, at each street and um, all over, all throughout the railroad uh, trail. The choice of railroad crossing is very, just very appropriate for this spot here, especially since the trains went right across the street right behind us here. So from 1909 until 1980, they hauled passengers until the 60s uh, and then freight all the time. And the, the freight included things coming from the Pacific Rim area, the ports of Seattle and Tacoma going east. And, and then they also um, transported uh, the grain and agricultural products from Kittitas County, uh, both east and west. My husband, Doug and I have owned uh, what was formerly the trainman's bunkhouse uh, for the Milwaukee Road um, and now is a going bed and breakfast. It's been a bed and breakfast since 1985. We're the third owners and we've been here since 1999. I appreciate so much the, uh, the whole barn quilt trail concept uh, and that it has been um, so successful here in Kittitas County and um, the, the stories behind each quilt block, I think, are fascinating. The histories of the barns and the historic uh, locations where the barn quilts are going up. Um, it just really, I hope, brings a lot of people into our beautiful county to see, uh, to see the barn quilt trail and, and, and the rest of the uh, territory that goes with it. Hi, I am Darlene Grant at Yakima River RV Park on Four Seasons Ranch in Ellensburg, just south of the city. The park has been since 1997 and um, had the ranch since the mid 80s. So we had cattle and we raised horses and at times we had goats and sheep and even had pigs for one week. The barn quilt that we chose is a star pattern with a rail fence incorporated into it 
with the colors of the sky and the river and the sun and the you know the sunsets the sunrises it's what we are known for out here and a lot of our customers come from the west side for the sunshine so in the corners we painted our brand on there which is four with a lazy s for four seasons ranch you know, i researched on the internet quite a few quilt squares and had a long list of things that possibly would coordinate with the ranch to do with fishing or horses or whatever and um, Randy's sister had made us a cross stitch thing for our wedding and uh, this was actually on there just a, a little different color placement with lights and darks but I looked at it one day and I thought, yeah, that's exactly what I need. Uh, the guests that we have come from all over the world. They've been from Holland, Switzerland, Saudi Arabia, Germany, England, Canada, of course. There's, uh, quite often there are carloads of ladies coming down the driveway or people who want to take uh, photographs, they'll stop on the highway or on the ringer loop and then they'll just come down the driveway and we welcome them. It's not a problem. We appreciate that they want to see the clothes. My name is Katie Daly Kladnik and I was born and raised on this farm. Uh, my parents came from Italy and they purchased this farm in 1922. And their name was Frank and Regina Daly. They eventually started a small dairy and we had a grocery store. My mom raised chickens and we sold eggs. And we just grew up here. It's a nice place to grow up. And you know, there were seven of us in our family, so <laughs> we had a, you know, we had a crowd. My niece Debbie Odaga, who passed away in December of December 8th, talked about putting up a barn quilt. And when she passed away, then we, the family, the cousins, and my sister and I decided to put up this barn quilt. And we put, uh, put the barn quilt has the cows because of the dairy. There are sheep and grapes. Uh, for my niece Debbie and her husband, and of course the Italian colors. So this is in memory of my parents, Debbie and Mike. My folks used to make wine. I, I'm not a wine drinker though. <laughs> no, I never liked it. <laughs> well, growing up, you know, we, we, us kids had charts to do. We, I used to peddle milk before I went to school in the morning. And then uh, we washed the bottles and, you know, and uh, my mom worked really hard because in those days, you know, we had how many stoves in the chicken coop, in the house, in the grocery store. She had about six stoves, the pump house to, you know, in the winter, we had, we had some cold weather and a lot more snow, I think, than we have now. And in the summer, the kids from the neighborhood would come over and, and we put, we didn't have to worry about cars. We played out and we had all the, you know, lots of room. And we used to play in the hay barn and slide down the hay, you know. It wasn't bailed in those days. It was, you know, brought in, you know, just loose. And then if you remember, there's a big a hole in the front of the barn. Then they used to have a hook with a pulley. You raise it up and then it take the hay and just drop it in the barn. <laughs> and we always had about, I think about seven or eight cows. And most of them were the Jersey cows. <laughs> For the milk and the, you know, the cream. <laughs> My name is Elizabeth Clausen. I'm from Moses Lake. I'm a certified quilt historian, quilt appraiser, but with the American Quilter Society. The stream of quilting that came to the U.S. came from England and Wales, and that came, of course, across with the with the first 
settlers in, in uh, the back east. The quilting has gone through a number of different fads and like as with everything else. The first quilts that, that, that were made in the Americas were very expensive because they had to import uh, the fabric from England because England was not allowing the uh, people in the Americas to manufacture um, fabric. They, you could do it at home, but they di didn't allow the technology of, of manufacturing to come to the United States. People came west, of course they brought their, their culture with them, and as they went west, and we're, if we're talking about Ellensburg and the eastern Washington area, as they came west, though the 1880s, 1890s um, fads or, uh, of quilting would have come with them. And right behind me you see a, a log cabin quilt, which was very, very common in that era. The other one that was very common in that era is called the crazy quilt. I think, I think quilting gives us a, a view of women's history. Really what I'm studying about is what that woman did in her spare time. That little bit of spare time that she had. I see this quilt as a connection to another woman in the past. And I, I, I feel like that it's a continuation of that woman. She may be gone now, but I can touch and I can see, I can see what she was thinking about. The symbolism on the quilt is almost like a message, you know, almost like you're passing on a message. Like, like it's not in, it's not in words, but, but you're actually, in symbols, you are passing on a message. For example, in the, in the quilts that are, are we call crazy quilts, they often put symbols of of love or symbols, certain flowers that, that symbolize this, or or they'd put a horseshoe for luck, or they'd put they put they put a lot of different symbols. And if you look at them and start studying the symbolic relationship for those of those things, you start getting an idea of well who the woman was, who made it, and wh what her family was. And to me, it's it's that connection to the woman in the past, to the people of the past, to how they lived, and not, not to, not to yeah, big history, big history, but to everyday history, that connection to everyday history. Yes, they all have a message, and they're all sent, most of them are messages of sending love to somebody. Almost all of them. which is Central Washington Quilt Show, is in its second year this year. And the first year was the inaugural year to dedicate the barn quilts of Kittitas County. We are the first barn quilt movement in Washington State, second in the Pacific Northwest. So that just kind of launched all of the quilt quilters within the county to come together in one specific show. Barn quilts were really important for us because we wanted the message to be about agritourism, agricultural and families, and then the barns were just a way that we could place some beautiful display blocks uh, for people to see from the roads. We wanted people to celebrate what the families had brought to the land for many years, what continues to come. Uh, we still have Anderson Hay as a main producer. We have all the hay farmers that are throughout the county. So it really was really important for us to celebrate agritourism. So Jackie Fawcett and Gary Fawcett came to the Chamber of Commerce. We had a tourism meeting. It was probably about three years ago, three to four years ago, and she came up with this plan to put um, display blocks on agricultural barns. At first it wasn't received very well, but um, the tourism committee decided to take the leap of faith and we were able to give them some financing to start. Uh, we gave them enough to have some building materials. And now a year later, they're at 80 display quilts. I think the thing that we worry about most is that people will not recognize after we're gone, <laughs> you know, our, our legacy. They will not recognize some that these were these were more than just blankets. These are more than just blankets. They're not just blankets. There there is more into them, and it isn't even just the work that was put into them. It's the it's the love. It's the creativity that the person wanted. Is, is giving to, the, to somebody else. 
Debbie wanted sheep. And so we just kind of incorporated everything together. So when you look at it, it really looks pretty with the grapes. And you don't see it as good from far away, you know, like the grapes. But looking at, at it from here, it's, it is pretty. And it's special. It's special to us and to the family.